Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. I had a lot of requests for this video and I finally had enough time to get around to making it for you. And that video is how to make jalapeno cheese smokies, jalapeno cheddar smokies. I hear the problem often, the meat's crumbly, the cheese is running. How many jalapenos do you use? How much cheese do you use? I'm gonna share all that with you guys. It's all gonna be in the link below as well as the video. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll get started on making jalapeno cheese smokies. Okay, you guys probably don't need any introduction to the jalapeno cheddar smoky. Maybe you do if you're over in Eastern Europe. It's probably not something you run into very often. But it's basically something that uh, North Americans, Americans in particular, I don't know, up in Canada here, people love the heck out of these. It's something that's fully cooked. You can just throw on the grate or on a hot dog stick and cook over a campfire. Um, but I do think people run into quite a bit of difficulty with these. They, I hear, you know, I can't, like I said, you can't get it to bind, the cheese runs, I get grease along the outside of the sausage. Um, so it's a really popular sausage, it's really good, it's got to be, um, the cheese smokies in the meat shop are probably number one or two sellers uh, here. And so I'm going to share that with you guys because uh, making your own homemade jalapeno cheddar smokies. What could be better? This recipe also works with all, I don't even change it a little bit for doing wild game. Um, it works with pork, it works with beef, it works with wild game, and it works with any combination of those three. I've got a guy, uh, every hunting season, brings me moose, we do a third moose, a third beef, a third pork, and it's a phenomenal sausage. We do tons of wild game sausage in the fall where it's 70% wild game, 30% 50-50 pork trim, or 70-30 pork trim if they want a little leaner, and works awesome. I get tons of good reviews. So we'll dive into that. Uh, what I'm using today is I have five kilograms, 11 pounds, of pork shoulder. So it's 25% fat, 75% lean pork meat. The ones I sell in the store are all pork, and they're quite popular like I mentioned. Okay, so maybe you can see here, I have my jalapenos. Lean ground pork shoulder, cheese, and spices. I'll go over the spices with you in a minute, but I'm going to do the jalapenos here first. So when I make a jalapeno cheddar sausage, and by the way, if you guys want to make a cheese smoky or you want to make an original smoky, cheese smoky, just don't add the jalapenos. Original smoky, just don't add the cheese. If you want to make a jalapeno smoky, don't add the cheese, but add the jalapenos. You guys can figure that out. You're smart. Smart crew. I got a feeling. So, when I make jalapeno smokies here, I use pickled jalapenos. Why? You know, there's lots of people probably like, well, I want to use fresh jalapenos. Up here in Canada in the wintertime, the jalapenos are spotty. Sometimes they're awesome, sometimes they're wrinkly and old. Like in February, you kind of get junk jalapenos. Pickled jalapenos are consistent. They're the exact same every single time I open them. They are pickled in vinegar, though. Vinegar denatures protein. So that's probably where some of you guys, if you're using pickled jalapenos, run into binding problems. So what you got to do is you got to drain them. And you got to let them drain for a little while is the trick I've found. Because you don't want any of that liquid vinegar in there. It's going to make it harder. You can still get them to bind, but it's going to make it harder for them, for your sausage to bind and get a good texture. That's why you guys, part of the reason why you guys get crumbly ones. Same sort of thing can happen with fresh jalapenos. If you use too much, there's a lot of moisture in jalapenos, and uh, that makes the binding process harder, but I just drain them. I also have a drain below me. I'm not just dumping this onto the floor. <laughs> drain all the vinegar out, and then I usually leave it upside down to continue draining for a couple minutes before I, uh, before I add it, just to let any of that extra moisture out. Then when it comes to cheese, I use the ribbon slices, the, you know, the almost next to plastic stuff because it creates the best cheese pockets. This is in Stanley Marinsky's book. He said he was skeptical and I thought, well, I'm probably not smarter than Stanley Marinsky. I'll give it a go. Uh, and it does. It works great. You get perfect little cheese pockets. They don't run through your casing. You can buy what's called high melt cheese, but it's like four times the price of this stuff. 
up here uh, down in the states, you guys can get cheese for cheap. I'm super jealous of that. That's capitalism at work for you, I guess. Pros and cons. But this stuff up here is it's like 16 to 20 dollars for two kilograms of cheese, versus if you're going to buy aged cheddar or you know other cheddar from your grocery stores. This would be like two kilograms of cheese would be I don't know. It'd be real expensive, like 40 dollars. And it's not going to make the cheese pockets for you. It runs out. So these big blocks of, see the slices here? See that stuff? This here is the best stuff to add. Or it doesn't have to be this brand, obviously. Just something like that is what the best stuff to add in making sausage. It doesn't melt away. It doesn't give you any binding issues. So those are the first two big things. That, uh, that are going to help you out in making a cheese or jalapeno cheese smoky. Also, you don't want it to be too fat because these two things add a little bit of difficulty to getting a good bind. Also, the fatter a sausage is, the, the more difficult it is to get a bind. So uh, as you get close to 30% or above 30% fat, without an emulsifier or a bowl cutter or a blender, it gets more difficult to get that bind. Uh, we're going to stuff these into 29, 32 millimeter casings. This is ground twice, once on a 3 8 plate for the first grind, then on a 1 8 plate for the final grind. So it's a 10 millimeter plate and then a 3 millimeter plate. Then what I usually do, guys, I'm going to pull my little countertop grinder, which I haven't used in a long time, but I'll mix the seasonings into this, get that protein extraction, then I'll add my cheese and jalapenos and run it through the grinder again. So I grind it down to a fine grind, and then I plate up into a 3 8 plate and run the cheese and the jalapeno again through, through with the fine ground pork, because that's going to chop those bits of cheese up into little pockets. It's going to cut up your little jalapenos for you. But if you don't have that, just chop it up with a knife and make sure that the cheese is cut small enough to get through your horn. I like doing it with the grinder because it really uh, spreads out the cheese and the jalapenos, and you get a little bit of cheese, and you get a little bit of jalapeno in every single bite. If you're chopping it up, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get big chunks of cheese, which is kind of good too, though. So, just options for you. I'm going to grab the spices. Be back. Okay, guys. So, here's the recipe for the jalapeno cheddar smoky. I've just mixed the spices up ahead of time to save us a little bit of time in this video. So, original smoky, cheese smoky, jalapeno cheese smoky, in beef, pork, venison, any combination of those three, I use this recipe exactly. And I'll say it now because I usually forget, but once you guys mix this up, these seasonings on this, fry up a little bit, taste it on the grill, make sure you like it. It is going to change a bit when you take it through the smoking process, but uh, it's going to be pretty close. So try this recipe out, fry it up, make sure you like it before you put it in. So we have salt at 15 grams per kilogram. Black pepper at three grams per kilogram. Cayenne pepper at half a gram per kilogram. Garlic at 3.5 grams per kilogram. Marjoram at one gram per kilogram. Marjoram is kind of like a lemongrass, sage combination spice. You, know, you see it in Polish sausages and in German sausages a little bit. Uh, pretty good in here. Really good in here, I hope. Uh, cure, because we're going to smoke it in the smokehouse. Three grams per kilogram. Sodium erythrobate, which is a cure accelerator. You can also use ascorbic acid at half a gram per kilogram. Then we're using binder at 10 grams per kilogram. If you're having a tough time, you can use binder at up to 20 grams per kilogram if you want. Tough time getting it to stick, but uh, sufficient mixing at 10 grams per kilogram will work. Uh, then we're going to use water at 100 milliliters, which is 100 grams per kilogram. And then, guys, for the cheese and jalapenos, uh, a nice, uh, you can play with these a little bit. I wouldn't play with the jalapenos too much, but the cheese, we do 130 grams per kilogram. And I've done up to double that, but they get pretty tricky to make, and they're really cheesy at uh, 260 grams per kilogram. That's about the most I've ever used. A little hard to make, but 130 works nice. You get a little bit of cheese in every bite. 130 grams per kilogram. And then jalapenos, pickled jalapenos, I use 70 grams per kilogram. You get a little bit in every bite. The other thing about using these pickled jalapenos is they're not as hot. They don't have as much bite to them. 
So that works good for these Canadians that I make sausage for. They don't like things too spicy. Drain a little bit more of that little vinegar water out. You guys can take them out and let them dry. But I'm going to add these spices to this and start getting that protein extraction happening. Then I'll chop up the cheese and jalapenos and we'll run it through the grinder. And like you guys have probably seen in other videos, you just mix this with the water till the spices are evenly distributed and you got a really good bind, meaning the sausage is getting really, really sticky. And I'll show you guys that when I'm done. I'm just going to measure the water out, add it, and start mixing. Be right back. Okay there guys, I've been mixing for a while. I've really thoroughly mixed it. Don't, uh, you know, don't cheat this step. It's really important because, you know, it, that's one of the big problems I see on the Facebook feeds and stuff is like, I, my sausage is crumbly, the cheese ran. If you get a better bind, you're going to have a better quality sausage in the end, I promise. So spend the time on the mixing. Grab a handful, it's really sticky, sticks to your hand, then it's done. Okay? So don't cheap out on that step. I have uh, measured out the jalapenos and cheese ahead of time. So it's 650 grams of cheese, 350 grams of jalapenos in this batch. And like I said, guys, I'm now going to add this to the fine ground sausage mixture, the smoky mixture that we've really mixed the heck out of. I'm going to mix those in a little bit more just to kind of evenly distribute them as we go through the grinder. And uh, I just realized I hadn't used this guy in years. I used the big Hollymatic grinder. I don't quite have the right size plate. I like to run the cheese and the jalapenos through a 3 8 plate, which I'll bring in for you guys to see. But the biggest one I have for my little grinder is a quarter inch plate, which is going to be fine. Just to show you guys, you don't have to do everything exactly like me. This quarter inch plate is going to be fine. But I'll just show you the size difference. It affects the pockets. So this is, this is the 3 8 plate, and this is the quarter inch plate. So you can darn near see that whole hole. So it's a little, little bit of a size difference. This is what I prefer. You get bigger, better cheese pockets, but this guy will be fine. So if whatever you got at home is good, you can even put it through a fine plate, but it's going to be really small cheese pockets and really small bits of jalapeno. Or you can chop it up with a knife. And I don't, some guys stick their grinder parts and stuff in the freezer for an hour before you start. Just make sure your meat's cold. You don't really got to stick your grinder parts in the freezer. I never have. Never has given me a problem. There's enough steps in this as it is. Simplify it as much as possible. But don't skip out on that mixing step. All right. And if you guys got these blue or whatever color gloves you want, that uh, helps in the mixing step because when you're mixing with your bare hands, it gets really sticky and really messy. But I'll just show you guys this first little bit. I don't need, you guys don't have to watch me grind the whole thing. But uh, yeah, I'll just take some of this cheese and jalapenos and lose any here. Sprinkle it in. Almost need a bigger mixing bowl. Just mix them up a bit too. Got these big chunks of cheese. If I break them up a little bit into smaller bits. Just toss it around so it's kind of roughly evenly distributed. I'm losing cheese left, right, and center here. I'll be losing cheese. So at this point, guys, I my audio bugged up on me. So uh, I'm just going to do a voiceover for you. But basically, I'm just mixing up the cheese and the jalapenos to get it evenly distributed. And uh, when you run through the grinder again, it's going to kind of redistribute it some more for you to make those pockets. Um, little tip for you when you're uh, running it through the grinder is to be... I wish I knew what I was saying here. Uh, you just be sending little meatballs down the grinder throat there. Uh, it's better than trying to jam a whole bunch into your grinder. You're going to end up fighting with it, I think is what I'm saying here. So uh, I think I just go through that process there, make sure everything's snug. Um, another tip for you is if the meat is smearing as it's coming out of the grinder plate, your grinder plate might not be on snug enough or might be on crooked. Uh, so I was get that good and snug. Yeah, I think at this point I just kind of slowly feed it bit by bit into the grinder and uh, 
get that cheese and jalapenos ground up into our smoky mixture. There you guys go. A little bit of grinder action, but basically I'm just going to do up these 11 pounds like this, continue to run it through. And you can kind of see, yeah, yeah, you guys can see the little bits of cheese pocket in there. So that's the goal guys, I'll do this and I'll uh, bring you back when I'm all done grinding and we'll load it into the stuffer. Okay guys, I just finished grinding it all up through the little grinder. I forgot how much work that was. I'm just using the big grinder um, and I'm pretty excited to see how these turn out in the smaller plate. So I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. But there it all is. Rock. Hopefully you can kind of see the little jalapeno chunks. They're not as big of pockets as I, I'm used to and I like, so that's why I'm kind of excited to see these. I haven't made it this way in a long time. Uh, but now I'm just going to take this, load it into the sausage stuffer, and uh, as we do that, that's another thing you guys need to know. You don't want to let this sit overnight. That vinegar from the pickled jalapenos or that extra moisture uh, if you're using fresh jalapenos, it's going to affect the cheese and it's going to affect the protein in the meat. So if you let this sit in the fridge overnight like this now, your cheese is going to smear and you're not going to have any cheese pockets when you smoke it. So you're, you're going you're to pick it up and you're going to load it into the smoke out or into the stuffer and you pack it into the stuffer like you do, like you always do, and it's going to smush the cheese and the cheese is, there's not going to be cheese pockets. There'll be cheese flavor. So maybe if you like it that way, that, go ahead and let it sit overnight, I guess, but if you want those little visible cheese pockets, mix it, run it through the grinder on a 3 8 plate, preferably. This is a quarter inch. We'll see how it turns out. And then stuff it right away. Okay, guys, so I'm going to do that. Big handfuls, load it into the smoke or into the stuffer, get those air pockets out, and I'll bring you in for some stuffing. All right, there, guys. So I got that sausage stuffer loaded up. I'm using 2932 millimeter natural hog casings. Uh, you guys could use the same size and in collagen if you wanted. Uh, if you got those, you can get those in uh, white or mahogany. All you ones just look like they're pre-smoked. And uh, like you guys have probably seen or done before, I just get a little bit of water in the sausage casing and then you can flush it through. That will help clear out any of the salt. Just do the whole casing here. Let me bring it somewhere where you guys can see it. I just run the whole, all that water right through the casing right till you get close to the end here, right up to the end, and then I grab the end, put the water on the horn there, make it easy to slide on, and uh, then I feed it back on, so that water is going to run through there, run through the casing twice, so then it'll be good and lubricated. Slide it on, of course I got my 29-32 millimeter horn on, you wouldn't do this with a pepperoni horn, otherwise you'd have a tough time getting the casings full enough, because you want to get them just full enough that uh, they don't break and not too empty so as the sausage casing doesn't get tough. There's not enough meat in the sausage casing, that's probably why you have a tough sausage. If it's too full, it's gonna break on you all the time. Okay guys, so I run into some more audio problems. I'm not sure if you heard that last little bit, but if you hear uh, sausage casing too full, it's gonna break on you. Uh, what I usually do is I leave a little tail there and I crank the sausage stuff until the first little bit gets in your hand and then you're just checking all the time to make sure that it's a little bit squishy but it's not too firm. If you can squish all the way through, it's too loose. If it's really firm, it's gonna break on you while you link. And then, uh, yeah, you just carry on stuffing. You can see on the horn there, I'm getting a little bit of air build up. So uh, what I should do here soon, I'm not sure if I do do it, but you can just um, take your fingernail and put pressure on the metal horn or take the back of a knife smack the horn and that's going to create oh right there i do it see using my thumbnail break that let that air out uh it just creates a pinhole for it to escape from if you get air pockets building up on your horn but basically not too full and just full enough i usually leave a little bit on the end so that I can link with and i think i just carry on and stuff the rest of these guys so all right guys the audio problems continued but this little section here is going to be on linking and uh all you do is you find the end of your sausage casing, that little bit you left for yourself, you just pinch right there. And uh, a smoky size is like four to five inches, maybe six inches if you got big Kaiser buns, you're gonna put them on. And just pinch uh, about three quarters of the way through, spin towards yourself three times. 
Then if you wanted, what I just said there is you could alternate, spin the next one away from yourself three times. But what I do is I do every other one, uh, see me pinching three quarters of the way through there, I do every other one towards myself three times. It's just a little bit quicker. Pinch four or five inches three times towards yourself. Skip that one, next one, three or four times towards yourself. And uh, yeah, I think I just do this whole link like that. So, and right after I'll stick them on some smoke sticks. Okay guys, so we just got them on the smoke sticks and uh, you can see if I can get this camera to focus, you can see those little bits of cheese in there and little bits of jalapeno. So what we're gonna do now in these next couple steps, refocus for me camera, is we're going to dry them off, step number one. So that's, uh, I got a fan inside this smokehouse uh, and we're gonna do that for about an hour at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we're gonna do the smoking process. Uh, so the damper, I have dampers on my smokehouse. The fan's gonna be on for all three steps. First step, dampers are wide open. We're drying them off. Second step, we're gonna add the hickory smoke. Um, and it's gonna smoke for probably an hour and a half at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So pretty low temperature. Then the final step is, is gonna be the cooking step. And that's gonna be at 185 degrees Fahrenheit with the dampers pretty much closed because you kind of want a little bit of steam to build up in your smokehouse and finish the cooking process. And of course, guys, this is just kind of what works for my smoker. You might have to tune it a little bit for your guys' if uh, it lets a bunch of humidity out. You might have to cook at a little higher temperature, but that's a good uh, baseline to go off of. So I'm gonna close the smokehouse door up, fire up the drying process, and then I'll, I'm not gonna check on them because I know how my smoker works. So I'll open the door up when, you got, when we're done and I'll show you guys the finished product, the Jalapeno Cheddar Smokies. All right guys, there is the Jalapeno Cheddar Smokies. You can see the little bits of uh, cheese and jalapeno. They're kinda, I'm usually doing a full smokehouse load so I, I don't usually do 10 pounds at a time. So uh, they got a little bit drier than I like. Uh, normally they don't have quite as, just a little bit of wrinkle. That's maybe just a little bit more than I like. But uh, I'm gonna take them, give them a cold water bath right now to stop that cooking process. And then uh, we'll cut into them and get you a cross section. Okay guys, got a little bit of cold water in there. Another thing that you, could, you should check right now is uh, if, they're, if you squeeze them and they're pretty firm, that means you got a good protein extraction and you're not gonna have a crumbly sausage. Uh, these guys are nice and firm, so I got pretty good hopes that they will be nice quality sausages in the end here. Got a little bit of water in there and I'll top it up with cold water. Uh, like I said, to, whoops, to stop that cooking process. That'll kind of help with that little bit of extra wrinkling too because you don't want to get them too dry. That's another factor that uh, can make your sausage casings tough. They're too dry, too wrinkly. So I'll just give them this little cold water bath to stop the cooking process and I'll hang them back up for just a little bit. You don't, or let them drip off before you stick them in the cooler and that'll bring that nice mahogany color back. So I'll do that now, guys. Okay, guys, so here they are. The jalapeno cheddar smokies. Let's see how they look on the inside. I just uh, just dumped the, hot, or the cold water there. That nice mahogany color is coming back already. The wrinkles are kind of taken care of. Now they've got that cold water bath. I'm a little happier with them. But, uh, whoa, we just lost one. Let's cut into them and get a nice cross section. And let's get you a better camera angle. Just dip right into one here. I'm pretty happy with the way these look. I know they're gonna be good. Okay, there we go, guys. Look at that. You can see those nice little bits of cheese, nice little bits of jalapeno. Let's, uh, action shot here oh that was money look at them cheese pockets i told you that's the cheese to use guys mm -mm. a little bit smaller than i like but uh there you go look at those those would be good i would be happier if they were just a little bit bigger but oh good flavor good and uh i should have made note if you've seen how uh you see how the sliced face of that sausage looks? You know, there's no crumbles. I can squeeze it. It's not falling apart. Oh, look at that juice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyways, we got some good protein extraction. So that's how you avoid the crumbly jalapeno cheddar sausage. 
And uh, I hope you guys make this. It works great with game. It'll get you to do all your hunting season stuff with it. Uh, pork, beef, it's so good. So if you guys liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider giving a uh, subscribing and uh, we'll make you more videos in the future. Try and solve your home sausage making problems. So thanks guys.